Okay guys, welcome back to old DW's Chop Shop. This is my face. So, I had some issues here uh, with footage. As you see, we have our heads on, clocked, torqued. Um, I lost the footage on where I put the cases on and torqued them down. So we're gonna go over that real quick. Uh, just word of mouth, it's real easy to do. What you want is to get a set of uh, piston ring compressors like this, okay? And you want your rear jug piston to sit up just a little bit above the studs, okay? And then your front one can be wherever, you got plenty of room. You put your uh, piston ring compressor over, clamp it down, not super tight, set your case on top, and you might have to beat it back and forth with a rubber mallet, slide it down, right? Your gaskets sit in the same spots. And uh, can I flip this around? You can tell which case is which because your rear is gonna have a sloped piece, right? And your front does not have a sloped piece. You can also tell with your gaskets, it looks like you have little oil holes here. Those are supposed to be blocked off. So block those off. That's it. Put them on, torque these down, good to go. Okay, so we got our cases on. I torqued these down. They're just a smidge past hand tight, right? Next thing we need to do is get our torque wrench, right? And uh, go make sure it's calibrated. This one um, is not, it's a piece of shit. It actually broke on me while I was trying to torque these down a second ago. And it's snap on, so they don't do uh, any kind of warranty on their torque wrenches. So it is what it is. Anyways, I had to wait for a new torque wrench to show up because none of my other ones would reach the 32 to 35 foot pounds we needed. Let me double check that. 32 to 36 foot pounds. Okay, cool. Now, one thing with this, um, the easiest way to set these is to use one of these, which is a torque adapter, a 12 point torque adapter. You could also see it being called a crow's foot. Uh, there's a lot of different things, but this is about the only thing that I've found that fits over these. Well, okay, not that one. That fits over these really at all. all right? And this one just seems like it's got a burr on it. We'll get it. I'll figure it out. No biggie. Um, anyways, when you're using your torque wrench, if you put this on and use it at 90 degrees either way, then there is no equation to do. But if I need to straighten it out, there's an equation. Or if I have it at 45, there's another equation. So what I like to do, right, we know these need 32 to 36 foot-pounds. So I would normally set this torque wrench if I could do it like this or if I had a regular socket. This would be 34 foot-pounds and I would send it. But because this is going to be sideways and there's a couple of spots where this is going to be a lot easier. I might keep it like this. There's an equation that we have to do. So let's take a look. Right up here, we get to do math, right? So for 180 degrees, a straight torque wrench, you need to know your torque wrench length, which is measured from the handle to the center of your head, right? which for this torque wrench is 16 inches. You need to know your foot pounds, and I've done this math a couple times, which for us, our desired torque is 35 foot pounds. And then you divide that by your torque wrench length, which is again, 16 inches, plus the extension length, which is measured from center of the square to center of the 12 point. And that on this is two, so that gives us 18, 
16 times 35 is 560. 18 divided by 560 is 31.1. Now, that means that if an acceptable torque is 32 inches, right? If I set this to 32 inches just like this, whether I'm at 90 degrees, I'll be putting 35 on, which is fine. And if I'm straight, I'll be putting 32 on, which is fine. So, bam. Next thing we need to do is set our torque wrench and set the camera back up. So, if you have a regular torque wrench, right, and it's an inch pounds torque wrench, probably a lot of the 3 8 drives are, so you're going to have Newton meters and in the tech manual it will tell you what you can set this to in newton meters and you will have inch pounds now if you don't have a newton meter readings you can convert inch pounds into foot pounds there's 12 inches in a foot right so i need 35 foot pounds you take 35 times 12 and that's your inch pound setting um i can't do that math in my head and i'm using my phone as a camera so i can't do it on my phone either but on this beautiful bad boy turn it on right now it's set at 35 from last time it was used so we're going to set it down to 32 and that'll be in my range no matter how I use it make sure I'm in the right twisty direction I am and I'm only going to do one of these and then I will fast forward. This bolt you're going to see me take off. I'm just going to flip it over. There's a burr right here. I might clean it up. I don't know. If you have a click type torque wrench, when you get there, it'll go click and you'll feel it. This one's going to vibrate and make noise and beep. And it also tells me in real time, so 26, we're within 10%, 30, see now it's vibrating, 32. One more over here. There we go. That's not bad, it's kind of nice, isn't it? This one, sorry, that's my bench grinder rolling down in the background. But this nut is actually what I was attempting to torque down the first time. And you guys didn't see that on video because I cut it out. But that torque wrench, that nice snap on one that I've had for years, I wasn't torquing. And I could just tell, you know, in my hand that shit ain't right. So I put it on in the, uh, in the vise and it took everything I had to get it to click, so it's trash. Torqued. All right, next thing we're going to do is uh, we will set the heads in place and then we will go over clocking our intake, which is something a lot of folks don't do. And it makes a huge, huge difference on the bike. And then we'll get the head bolts torqued down. Okay. So, setting our heads in place. What we're gonna do is you make sure that, again, this top is clear and clean, and there's no gunk or shit down in the pistons. All right. Then you take your gaskets. 
and you line them up. Now, there's this hole in between some shit, and that hole in between the shit is there and there, right? There and there. So we just put our gasket on there. So that that's in between the shit. Perfect. Yeah, I can tell already these gaskets will be fun to do. But they'll work. Yep, everything lines up. All right. We'll do the rear head first. Now, tell the heads apart, your exhaust, your exhaust for the rear is going to face the rear. Your exhaust for the front is going to face the front. So this is the rear head, right? And I'm trying to think of the easiest way to do this. And then one more time, make sure your battery's covered up. I want to make sure, I'm nervous about this misaligning this hole, so I want to make sure I'm in the area before I shove my head on. So maybe, just maybe, I can figure out something like this. See, I would have fought with that forever. Okay. So get the front of the head over that. And then we'll pull that down. Slide that head on, and I know that's going to be lined up. we're in there one now Harley head gasket bolts are different than your car or truck or whatever these are not torqued yield bolts these are just torqued right so theoretically you can reuse your Harley head bolts um, if you're taking head bolts off of an engine that you've never fucked with before I would replace them they're cheap in this case these are they look rough but they are new bolts, they're just a couple years old, and they were on for a couple hours, taken off, tossed in a tray, and they just sat. So I'm gonna reuse these same bolts. But you do whatever is best for your application. Well, that one went right in, nice. Okay, so I got two bolts in on the rear head. See if we can get front head on. When does this line? Okay, this one wants to go that way. Oh man, we're going to have to do the same weird double head bolt holdy uppy trick that I just made up. Okay, that one's kind of sort of started.
All right, so now if you've noticed, I left my heads so that they wiggle, right? And that's so we can clock them. We're gonna do a couple things here. We're using gaskets, these flex gasket, or the multi-layer gaskets that I've never used before. And we're gonna use intake seals, clamps that I've never used before. I believe they still work with the O-rings, but clocking the heads should be the same. If you have this style clamp, put it on, it is what it is. This is the style that I like to use and that I was going to use, but this one stripped out on me. And I found this set in my parts shed, so guess what? We're using them. Okay, so you take your O-rings, make sure you got them, and then you take your intake, which is here. Uh, there's gonna be some kind of marking on top, right? X85, whatever. The S and S on the S and S ones go up. I think there's a Harley one that goes up. I don't know. Anyways. You stick this in about where it would be and then you have just a little bit of room to wiggle one head and then wiggle the other forward and backward it'll never be whoops the most perfect seal but it'll be a hell of a lot closer look at that all right now what I like to do take my o-ring run it over the top and this stretching out like this isn't gonna hurt anything it's made of rubber now if you stretch the shit out of it that would hurt it but this isn't doing nothing bad oops And if you get it in place just right, and that should stay just a, a little bit. Okay. I suppose these can go really either way. So what I'm going to do, I think I want those going the other way. Easier to tighten them up more. But I can definitely get them a lot tighter on this side.
Okay, so now that intake is in and it's tight. So that's gonna hold our heads in place, right? I can't easily move them anymore. Intake doesn't move. It is sealed. There's no lights coming through the other side. Right? Our gap is even inside there. As long as these clamps that I've never used before, and I don't know if I trust them yet, hold, then uh, that's it. This should be on there and good for a long, 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 long time. Next thing we need to do is torque the heads down. We'll grab this swivel head again and just snuggle all these up. This thing only goes like 10, 10 inch pounds, 10 foot pounds. Anyways, it's not gonna, it's not gonna make any difference tightening these down. Okay, so now we're gonna torque the heads down, right? They get torqued down to 65 foot-pounds. So, up here to our math, torque wrench is 16 inches. We need 65 foot-pounds, 16 times 65 is 1040. Our torque wrench length is 16 inches, plus our two inch extension is 18. 18 divided by 1040 is 57.77777777777. So, what that tells me is if I have this straight, that needs to be set to 57 foot pounds. If I'm turning it at a 90, it'll be set to 65 foot pounds, right? This is not a range. The reason 32 worked for everything else last time is because that was within the range of the torque that we needed. There is no range on this one. This one just is, so we need 65. Well, I'm going to start like this. Turn it on. Ooh, too much. Fifty seven point seven, boys, and I need to get the right size. Heads are on, heads are torqued, cylinder bolts are torqued, intake is on, heads are clocked, intake's tight. That's it. This video is going to be a little bit long, but I really hope it helps somebody out. <laughs>